So this next fly we're going to tie is called a um, orange and partridge or orange and yellow depending on what kind of floss and stuff you have. Speaking of which, oh I got some. Okay. Alright, um, now this is a pattern that I have tied before and, it, and it's a real, it's kind of a mainstay with soft tackles. Um, it doesn't have a tail traditionally. Um, and sometimes it's tied with just a uh, thread body. We do want to create a taper. You know, we want a carrot shaped body. And so you can do that with thread. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it with thread and then I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna tie some floss and do a floss body as well. Sometimes it's tied with a piece of wire rib over that floss. Um, so you can certainly do that if you want to. Um, I generally don't on mine, but um, Find my bionic glasses and I'll get started here. Right there next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the young guy in the club. You may be good looking, but you don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do a nice even thread body. And then, you think this fly should have a tail? No, I just say that. Because we can sure one put one on here. Carrot nymph that's good for bluegill. I didn't orange, but it does have a tail. You don't need one. Okay. Well, I can sure do it, though. Um, okay, so what I did is I went back to my barb and then I went back to the two thirds point. This one is going to have like a dubbing um, uh, thorax, and uh, traditionally it's rabbit. I like to take my rabbit and mix a little bit of uh, crystal flash in it. Oh, here it is. And so I just take a little bit and, and mix them together. And I think that's a, I, think th I like that little sparkle in there. Okay, so we're gonna just, this is orange floss. Everybody should have some of some color. It does, this fly doesn't have to be, it's, you know, yellow, orange, tie it in red. It's just called partridge and orange, but it's also called partridge and yellow. And, so I want to tie this in. I want to kind of try to keep it on top. And now I really want to make sure I have touching wraps. And like that trick that we learned on the uh, uh, flies last week, if I hold this floss up at an angle, it'll gather all of my thread wraps and put them right next to each other. All right, so now we're going to do a, a body taper. So basically all it is is I'm going to take my thread I'm going to go ahead and wrap back forward to where I want to stop. You can see I nicked my thread there with my hook point. Okay, so I'm right here. All right, so I want this to be the thickest part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thread back to about three quarters, wrap it back forward, and bring it down to half, wrap it back forward, and maybe a little bit more, and back forward. And what I'll do, my thread wraps will accumulate up front. And that will cause, and I'll get my fret, thread nice and flat. So I'm going to come down, nice touching turns. And I'm going to come down to about the three quarter point, or the way I always do it is just I come down to where I'm just about to hit the point of that hook, right there. Then I come back forward. And then when I get back where my starting point is, I'm going to come about halfway down and back forward. And then what I'm doing is I'm just building a taper. And if you're doing this on a, you know, I, like I say, I've, I've fished these much smaller too. If you're doing this on a smaller hook, that carrot shaped taper will be, um, much more pronounced. It's kind of kind of hard to get a really good thread taper on a big hook unless you're tying with big fat thread. So, but you get the idea. That's that's the technique to do it. Okay, I'm going to come forward. Then I'm going to take my floss. And I want my floss to stay nice and flat. Nice touching wraps. So this would have fished just fine with the thread body. I just figured that 
you're paying 50 bucks, we ought to give you as many steps as possible, right? <laughs> so I probably should have done wire and a tail too. Okay, so that's your body. Now I'm gonna just dub a, I'm gonna dub kind of like that uh, um, uh, crystal dubbing on that last, on the first fly. I'm just gonna dub like kind of a ball. I don't really care how tight it is because I am gonna, I'm gonna brush it out also. So I'm gonna go ahead and put quite a bit less dubbing on than I did on that first fly. And I just wanna create a thorax right here. Always be careful to know, you know where you are because you do have to leave in tie-in room for your hackle. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Pull all the fibers back, come forward. Okay, and then, because this is rabbit, I can take my dubbing brush, I can bug it out, it's a lot easier. I saw on that first fly that a lot of people had their hackle turned in, uh, tied in before they did this, and uh, this is much, need my little micro brush. And then just kind of, Wet your fingers and bring everything back. Just kind of give it that buggy look. All right, now, so again, just another regular feather. Come in, take off all the trash. I saw a couple of people tying these in by the stem and then grab the tip and wrap it. Um, you know, I watch people that do that routinely. The end result is pretty much the same. You know, I can't really tell a fly that was wrapped one way or the other. It's just what's easier for you. I always like leaving the stem long as my handle. So this fly, just like the last one, you know, I don't want my hackles to extend past my fly, so that's obviously too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start gradually popping them off. Okay, so that'll work. All right, so now on this one, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove half the feathers to wrap it. And this is just, you know, the, again, this is not something that's um, always done with this particular fly. You could do it with every soft tackle you tie. It's just a technique to teach, that's all. Okay, so I got my feather prepared just like, just like all the rest. When I tie it on, I know that I'm gonna tie it on this way, right, going over the top. So this is the leading edge. This is the leading edge of my wraps. So I'm gonna remove those fibers. And don't try to do that all at once. Just grab a little section and pull, a little section and pull, and it'll all come off. And then what, you're end, what you end up with, now you've got half as many hackle fibers now, so you're definitely gonna get a sparse collar. I end up with something that looks like that. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and tie it in. Go ahead and clip my tip short. left over I'm just gonna fold back wrap that down pretty damn good job I thought four flies in 16 minutes okay so now we're gonna wrap now I only have one side of my hackle to worry about And this too is rotary vices or really make this easier. Um, I've tied the rest without it, so. And I just wanna make sure that each wrap goes right in front of the wrap before. And so on this one, I won't stroke them back as I go. And I'll show you. Good, we got some that are clumped up. I can show you how to fix that too, okay.
So I really don't want to trap any hackle fibers since I pulled half of them off. I don't have that many to spare. Okay. So some of them are kind of coming forward so I can take my hand and I can just pull them all straight back and then I can come back with my thread and I can wrap just a little bit over those butts and then if I do now they're all going back so you know a lot of people put a lot of work into stroking those fibers back and making sure that every wrap looks good and that that is the way to tie these but if that doesn't work out for you you know it, it can all be corrected here at the end Okay, and then I got some clumped together fibers. Um, some people will use a bodkin, a needle, to go in, and, but this trusty little toothbrush. And that toothbrush also will help kind of brush out some more of that dubbing. Lisa's probably looking for a toothbrush right now. And that is an orange and partridge.